Hello, everyone. Um, well, it could have more tea and cake. Um, <laughs> that, that would probably be more interesting than what I'm about to tell you. Um, but I suppose going back to, to sort of Kenneth's uh, talk just before break, uh, I was actually born in 1986, uh, the day of the Shuttle Challenger disaster. So <laughs> that's, that's uh, just as a bit of a, an idea of timescales. Um, I, I went to school in a place called Yarm. In, uh, for, it used to be in North Yorkshire, um, and it's sort of right right on the edge of the North Yorkshire, what then became Cleveland. Um, uh, it was a private school, so that's, don't judge me. <laughs> um, but essentially, what, what I really enjoyed when I was young was was history. There was, there was no archaeology at school. Um, we, and when we got into senior school, we had to do Latin, of all things. And it just, I, I've been perennially useless at languages. So they realized quite early on that I was garbage at Latin. So they got me to do uh, classics instead, um, which was much better for me um, because it was all in English and I really enjoyed it. It was just the kind of just the Homer's Odyssey all over. It was brilliant. Um, so that that was everything that I did throughout school. I then went on to do an A-level in classics as well. Um, but while I was still at school, the place I actually wanted to go and do as, as a degree was zoology. So completely random. <laughs> so when I chose my A-levels, I chose um, classics because I was quite good at it psychology um, because it was something new that was interesting, biology and design and technology. So it was completely random stuff, but it gave me options going forward. So, um, and as it turns out, I ended up being fairly poor at my biology. So the zoology kind of went out the window um, and the classics were still pretty good, but my psychology was Surprisingly, I got 100% on one of my exams. And it's like, how, how do you even do that? Um, so, yeah. And then I thought, well, I don't want to do psychology at university. I still want to do the classics. But every university, you would have to do Latin or ancient Greek to be able to do ancient history and classics. So I was like, right, well, how do we get out of this? And the only way to get out of it was by doing archaeology uh, as a joint honours. Um, so I then applied to several universities. I got into Newcastle, which was just up the road, which was fantastic. Um, and I studied ancient history and archaeology. That was uh, starting in 2000 and 2004 and graduating in 2007. Um, and that was, that, that was a, a fun course to do. Uh, did a lot of ancient history. But then in the first summer... I went to work on a community excavation at Bollyhope Common in Weirdale with uh, Dr. Rob Young and Jane Webster. Um, that was kind of a bit of a turning point for me because then I realized I actually quite enjoy archaeology. It's outside digging holes in stuff and it's good fun. Um, so that, that kind of sparked me. And then in my second year, I got in contact with Tease Archaeology and did a bit of volunteering in the summer. Uh, with them in Hartlepool. Um, Hartlepool's fascinating, by the way. It's got all this this Iron Age stuff going on there. Um, compared to Middlesbrough, that's that's just modern weird stuff. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and I did some more at Bollyhope Common, and then graduating, I managed to have an opportunity to go to Turkey um, with Nicholas Postgate, and worked at Calissa Tepe. Um, and that, that was a fantastic opportunity and, um, Newcastle university, we, we did the, the Byzantine archeology. span So at the very top of the Tepe and that, that was, it, it was interesting. It was a completely different approach to what you'd expect in this country. Um, we, we had, we were supervising local diggers and I suppose this comes back to my useless languages. Um, Turkey is not the easiest of languages. <laughs> Uh, to learn. Um, so there was a lot of hand gestures. Um, and can you dig a bit more out of that uh, kind of approach? Um, so that was in the summer of 2007. And I came back thinking, I need to get a job, really. I've got nothing else planned for this next year. So the two options are I go on the dole or 
I'll try and find a job somewhere. Um, so I didn't know anything about the world of commercial archaeology at that point because Newcastle did nothing to teach you about commercial archaeology. It was all archaeology of the Romans um, and no, nothing practical as such that we did. Um, I believe it's a lot better now. I believe it's, it's, it's a fantastic course now. Um, but yes, I, so I just Google searched archaeological contractors in the northeast of England um, and sent emails out and made phone calls. And eventually I got a job with Northern Archaeological Associates in Barnard Castle, um, where the site that we worked on was um, Mitchell Lathes in Dewsbury. And it, it was fantastic archaeology. It was all nice, easy archaeology as well, because it was cut into the limestone bedrock. So it was all nice and black and white. You couldn't really miss it. So it's perfect site to be your first site on commercial archaeology. Um, so we then, I was working on there. I was just a digger. The only downside with it was I didn't really get to do much recording because the supervisor did everything on that site. It was just purely you dig the hole and tell me about it. I'll take the photos, I'll do the contact sheets. So it was three months of that, but it, it was good, it was good. Um, and because at the time, NAA was self-employed. So when that job came to an end, I had nowhere to go. Um, they, they didn't tell me there was nowhere else to go and I had no experience of it. So I was back to where I was in the summer of 2007, trying to find, uh, a job. So I, I, again, I emailed around um, and made some phone calls and I got a phone call from, from Alan Lupton saying, would you like to come and work on the Asby panel pipeline, which extended through North Yorkshire and West Yorkshire. For anyone who's starting out on archaeology, linear schemes are brilliant because um, you get such a wide range of archaeology on them. You just have like you can have industrial stuff, you can have prehistoric stuff and it's it's just such a range of stuff and one day from the next you never know what you're going to get. So it's it, it really is a good experience. So we st I started there in February 2008 and that was working through through that particular project. When that came to the end I was fortunate to then be part of the watching brief crew on that project as well, which again, if you ever get chance to work on a pipeline, that is an experience because it's, it's like dodgems with bulldozers. <laughs> it, it's probably a bit better these days, but, um, in, in the sort of late two thousands, it was still a bit hairy. Um, especially when you were working with Murphy's. Um, so yes, that, that was good fun. Um, and then when that came to an end, because Oxford Archaeology is quite a big company, there was an opportunity to go work for Oxford South in Kent. Um, again, it, it's what I found incredibly interesting about commercial archaeology is the fact that you can see a lot of different sites in all different parts of the country. So you get such a range of stuff to, to get experience of, especially in your early career. So th this is my first year of commercial archaeology was moving around different sites. Granted, it was with the same company in the end because Oxford kept me on for a whole year to the end of 2008 when the recession kicked in. Um, it was, as I was saying, it, it was Yorkshire, Kent, then over into the Isle of Man for a bit because we had the, the airport extension over there. And then up to Carlisle uh, for the Northern Development Route. And then, as I've just mentioned, the recession hit, which was a bit of a nuisance. Um, Oxford had to slim down a bit. We had too many staff, so I was made redundant. Um, thankfully, that was only for three months. Um, and still, I didn't know about Badger. So um, it was back, back to the emails and the phone calls. And I was then taken on by Northern Archaeological Associates again when they started on the A1. Um, this, this was the section that runs from Dishforth to Leeming. Um, I only stayed with them for a few months, but again, it's li linear schemes uh, are 
such an experience to be involved with. And another thing that I've always enjoyed with working in archaeology is the different people you meet. Um, not just archaeologists, but the people doing the developments. Um, I've come across people who go, oh, you don't, you don't want to be involved with the brickies and stuff like that, but the real people and the, the, they've got such life experience. And I mean, you get the racist ones and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, they, they are such genuine people at times. Um, but as throughout being redundant and then working with NAA, I did get regular contacts from who, who I would probably say are key people in the development of my career, which are Fraser Brown, who is now the regional manager at Oxford Archaeology North, uh, and Paul Clark, who used to work for OA and then went on to work for RPS and has, has now gone up to Orkney. Um, uh, they, they kept in contact with me throughout that. What I suppose would probably have been a difficult period because I was made redundant um, and didn't know what I was doing. Um, so that, that, those two people are incredibly important. Um, but as I was saying, I then got a phone call from Fraser saying, do you want to come back and work for us for back on the Carlisle Northern Development Route, which had been carrying on in the background. And as part of that, there was a huge site found towards the end of one of the watching briefs as part of that road scheme. And that site included a, a massive, massive mesolithic flint scatter, paleo channel, uh, and all that stuff. If, if you've been to the British Museum, you'll have probably seen the Tridents, which are on display or have been on display there. Um, it was it was a hard experience. It was six months of digging in horrible northwestern weather, but the archaeology we produced was incredible. So I think the, the ultimate result of the works was an incredible result, but the experience was a bit... It was a bit grim, <laughs> to say the least, especially living in Carlisle as well. Um, so, uh, so yes, and, and that was kind of, I've, I've essentially been with Oxford Archaeology since that point. Um, but the so intervening years from mid-2009 to now have, have been sort of very formative for me. Um, as I say, it's it's with Oxford Archaeology, but it's it's been on such a wide variety of different projects. And that was starting off as an assistant supervisor in 2009. Um, I was an assistant supervisor for quite a while, um, up till 2014 in the end. So it's it's a fair chunk of time, but in that time, I got such a wide variety of experience. Um, there was just so much stuff that we dug, um, working down on the East Kent access, uh, with Oxford South was an incredible experience. Again, just uh, some, some of the huge features we were digging, uh, through chalk were, were incredible. Um, and then going on to, um, a variety of other projects in the North of England. Um, we, we did spells working at Furness Abbey in uh, in Barrow in Furness and and bits and bobs like that so it's that's all been critical to to them moving into a supervisory position um which as i say was 2014 um i supervised a lot of small projects evaluations and uh little strip map and records all over the place and and one of the the sort of key moments at this point was um, a industrial period site in Stockport um, where we we excavated uh, some housing and some some back plots um, and of those back plots uh, we, we found a toilet of all things um, and the I actually managed to get onto page three of the Stockport newspaper uh, with, with an old gentleman who we presented the toilet to who I actually believe may have used it um, so that that was possibly the highlight of my supervisory career uh, <laughs> um, I was then made a project officer um, after a couple of attempts and um, the, the the big project I had there was working at a site in, in Newark, which uh, Katie's working on at present, uh, which has come back 
Um, so that that was again that had quite a smattering of stuff on it. It it had several cremation urns as well as Roman period stuff. So it it, it was that was a nice site. We had lots of finds there. Um, and because of my stint as a project officer, and that was quite a big site, I thought project management could be an option. Um, at the time, uh, my partner also became pregnant with our first uh, first child. Um, I thought, how, uh, how am I going to be able to work on away-based sites, which the majority of our projects are, with a young child? Um, and thankfully, at that point, um, there was a advert went out for project manager in, in our north office. So I thought, give it a go. Um, I've had a bit of experience doing people management. Um, and I didn't get it at that point, but they did offer me a placement. So I took on the placement and it took a bit of time. Um, but then another advert came out and I was made a, a full blown project manager, uh, which is where I am today. And then a second child came along as well, <laughs> which kind of cemented the fact that I needed to be at home more, um, especially because my partner then went off to work in forensic archaeology. Um, and yeah, she, she doesn't even know what day of the week she's going to be at home. Um, so other than the fact that she's part time and only works Monday to Wednesday. So that that is pretty much my career. And I think the one thing I would say throughout all of this is be honest. Be honest with your employer uh, of, of what you are capable of, what you have learned, um, what you know you can do. Because it, if you don't, if you're not honest, you're just going to fall into pit, just you're just going to fall over yourself left, right and center. And it's just not, it's not worth it in the grand scheme of things. And trust in yourself. That's the other thing. Just trust in what you can do and give it a go as well. There's no point in just going, I can't do that. You just, if you've never done it before, just have a go and see what happens because you never know. You may be brilliant at it. And that's, that's it for me.